This is David Vinegar, consultant obstetrician and gynaecologist. Welcome to this brief overview on polycystic ovary syndrome. You will welcome to review the subject in greater detail on my website, twowomenshealth.com. Polycystic ovaries are typically larger than normal ovaries. The central area or the stroma is more dense than normal and around the periphery are many small cysts measuring between 2 and 8 millimetres. A cyst is a fluid filled sac. The distribution is said to resemble a necklace. Ultrasound has revolutionised our appreciation of the prevalence of polycystic ovaries. They're being typical peripheral necklace appearance of the cysts and the dense stroma. For many years it was impossible to compare results and research on polycystic ovary syndrome as there was a lack of consistency on criteria for the diagnosis. In 2004 the European Society of Human Reproduction and Embryology and the American Society for Reproductive Medicine achieved a new consensus for the definition of PCOS. It was agreed that there should be two out of the following three criteria present. The ovaries should be polycystic, the diagnosis here being usually by ultrasound. There should be oligomenorrhea and or anovulation, in other words, infrequent periods and evidence of no egg release, and there should by, be biochemical or clinical evidence of hyperandrogenism, that is to say evidence that the male hormone levels are increased. This would be assessed either clinically or by levels of the hormones in the blood. This revised definition has provided us with an international framework for the clinical assessment of PCOS and for future research and collaboration. Ultrasound has shown us that approximately one woman in five or 20 percent has polycystic ovaries and about a third to a half of these, in other words six to ten percent, have polycystic ovary syndrome. Although a great deal is known about the polycystic ovary syndrome, the exact causation has yet to be determined. Polycystic ovary syndrome is probably an inherited condition. There has been one specific gene implicated and two others also seem to be involved. Frequently there is a history of polycystic ovary syndrome in the family. Premature balding in men is often a manifestation of the same gene that results in PCOS in women, so that in some situations we may be able to consider that the gene has been passed down from the father. The biochemical changes associated with polycystic ovary syndrome are often related to insulin resistance. As insulin resistance is a common finding in polycystic ovary syndrome, I would like to explain it to you. Essentially, the patient has a glucose tolerance test. This means she has nothing to eat or drink overnight, and then a blood sample is taken first thing in the morning, a fasting blood sample. She is then given a glucose load, which means that she is given a sugar drink. And blood samples are taken in a series over the next two hours. In this graph we have a patient who is normal, has normal ovaries, and one with polycystic ovary syndrome. And you can see that the sugar levels are similar. Younger women, particularly with polycystic ovary syndrome, do not tend to be diabetic and therefore their glucose tolerance test is normal, although they may develop diabetes later in life. If the blood samples taken during the glucose tolerance test 
are also analysed for insulin levels, we see a marked difference between the lady with the PCOS and the lady who has normal ovaries. This is because the tissues of women with PCOS are more resistant to the insulin levels and therefore to maintain normal sugar levels a greater output of insulin is required. Two frequently asked questions about polycystic ovary syndrome. How long will you have polycystic ovary syndrome for? Unfortunately PCOS is a problem that does not disappear. It is almost certainly an inherited genetic condition. Just like the colour of your eyes, it cannot be changed. The second question is, why do symptoms of PCOS sometimes develop in the 20s and 30s rather than the teens? Many women are perplexed that they have had no problems, they had a baby, no skin problems, and then a little later in life these symptoms arise. Almost certainly this is related to weight. We all have a tendency to gain weight as we get older. With regard to general health, there is a spectrum of severity, ranging from no more than a little irregularity of the menstrual cycle to troublesome excess body hair and anovulatory infertility, that is to say, infertility associated with failure of egg release. Early suggestions that PCOS is a cause of heart disease seems to have been unfounded. Obesity, however, is associated with heart problems and many women with PCOS are overweight. There is evidence that the long-term complications of PCOS are increased by the addition of obesity. If you have PCOS, you should make every effort to keep your weight down. Between 20 and 40% of women with polycystic ovary syndrome will develop diabetes in later life. And many will have elevated blood sugar levels during pregnancy, gestational diabetes. As PCOS is associated with anovulation, failure of egg release, and it is only after egg release that progesterone is released from the ovaries, the endometrium may be subjected to long-term oestrogen without cyclical progesterone, and progesterone protects the endometrium against malignancy. There is therefore an increased risk of endometrial cancer in association with PCOS. Women with long menstrual cycles, particularly in the 40s and onwards, should receive progesterone on a cyclical basis. Infrequent periods or amenorrhea is a common symptom associated with polycystic ovary syndrome. For a sexually active woman, this may lead to anxiety if menstruation is delayed. It must be stressed that PCOS associated with infrequent or absent periods only means that the chance of pregnancy is reduced. But this can by no means be considered as a guarantee against pregnancy. Contraception is required. Sometimes there may be a slight dragging discomfort in the pelvis as the ovaries are heavier than normal. Pelvic pain and PCO are both common and not surprisingly many patients with pelvic pain also have evidence of PCO. A pelvic ultrasound examination is appropriate for investigation of pelvic pain and 20% of women will have polycystic ovaries. I would emphasize however that polycystic ovary syndrome is not considered to be a cause of pelvic pain.